The incredible legends of the abominable Dr. Fives began a few short years ago. All of them, unfortunately, true. It was here in London's fashionable Maldine Square when Fives ventured out to work his diabolical revenge against those responsible for the death of his beloved wife, Victoria, and the destruction of his own face, making it necessary to talk through an ingenious mechanism in his neck. My wife existed only six minutes on the operating table. You murdered her. When the acid reaches him, he will have a face like mine. brilliant minds of Scotland Yard were baffled as the amazing murders continued, each more fiendish than the last. And in his soundproof basement of his mansion, none could hear his flamboyant songs of triumph and revenge, played on his organ and by his ingenious clockwork musicians. We'd have got to find Fives. Only by a stroke of amazing luck did the police seek out Maldine Square. But the fiendish Dr. Fives was prepared for such an emergency. And building his face anew, he entered the crypt where he had enshrined his beloved wife, incredibly maintained, neither alive nor completely dead. And there Fives placed himself in suspended life, like her, until it would be time for Fives to rise again. lay in darkness three years until the moon coming into proper conjunction with the eternal planets shone upon the golden moon of the crypt pulsing with a fantastic life of its own lifeblood then flowed back into fives great wheels and motors sprung into motion and dr fives once more walked upon the earth
I have rested beside you. Tonight, the glorious moon has risen to the exact position which last occurred 2,000 years ago, signaling the opening of this crypt and the beginning of our greatest adventure. We shall embark to the land of Egypt, where years ago in a mountain overlooking the valley of the pharaohs, I did prepare for us a wondrous shrine, unknown by any living man. There, my beloved, awaits the key to resurrection for you and eternal life for both of us. And once again, I call on you, Volnavia. Come one more time, my trusted aide. Join me and my beloved, for we have work to do to bring her back to life. worthless. Yes, Ambrose, worthless. But without my knowledge or my interpretation of the translation, it has no value or significance. Three years it took me to come upon this grand and final realization. It was the one, the one piece I'd searched for my whole life. May I, uh, Vanderbeck? Mm -hmm. Ah, so this is it. The papyrus that I've read so much about. I've made no secret of it. It seems that when they demolished some old house in Maldine Square, it came into the hands of a dealer who contacted me, knowing of my interest. And this seems to be almost a matter of life and death to you. You're a strange man, acclaimed as one of the most brilliant minds in the Western Hemisphere, and yet you seem obsessed with... Yes. The spiritual, the mythical aspect of life. Of course I'm obsessed with life. But somewhere in Egypt that obsession will be answered. This, this is all hypothesis. Five years ago I toured the whole area. Indeed, Ambrose. And nothing. 
Well, I remember looking down upon the whole valley. That, my friend, was your greatest mistake. You looked down. Did it never occur to you to look up? The sky? Exactly. That's where the answer lies. The stars. The moon. The sky is the key. While you look down, I look up. The rings around Saturn, when were they discovered? Oh, the beginning of the 18th century. Exactly. And yet, look here. See? Plainly marked. And that map is 5,000 years old. And this, only a fragment, but of what significance? It's a page from the logbook of the Phoenician trading ship. Notice the positioning of the stars. A chart far more sophisticated than anything we allowed for in our calculation. And finally, this. The Temple of Hibiscus. That's where we're going. What do you hope to find? If there's treasure, gold, Ambrose, it's yours. I'm seeking something more. What more do you want? I like to think he wants me. I can tell by your face you've forgotten. We're dining with Princess Rika. I'm sorry. I'll go up and change. Make Ambrose a drink, will you? When are you two going to... Get married. You better ask Darius that. Or perhaps after this trip. You know, sometimes it's like... Well, as if he's going to Egypt for my benefit. Every day he grows more preoccupied with something. I only wish I knew what it was. Oh, Ambrose, I don't want to go. I thought you wanted to go. Oh, no, darling, I wasn't talking about tonight. Don't worry. Well, are we ready? Right, here we go, then. Come along, my dear. Well, at least the meal should be interesting. Oh, you could get a good clarity anyhow. Darius, we can't keep the princess waiting. Blue blood, you know. Come on, we'll just have to see what like.
Once more, I have been forced to kill for you, Victoria. Only that you may live again. For here, where mystic lines converge, we'll find the door that separates the living from the dead. I say... Uh, has he any known relatives in this country, sir? It would seem most unlikely. Mm. Well, may I ask how long has he been in your employment? These questions are academic, Inspector. The papyrus... Well, that may be... Don't interrupt me. It damn well is so. The papyrus is missing, and that's all that I'm concerned about. Not this prolonged post-mortem. Oh, now, now, let's just get our priorities right. A man has been senselessly killed, murdered. All right, so he has. But I have been senselessly robbed. How curious as that may seem to your police mentality, the latter is all that I care about, you understand? Find the papyrus, and doubtless that will lead you to the killer. But find the papyrus first. And for 24 hours to complete your investigation. Well, th this papyrus, uh, who exactly would know that it was in your possession? Any interested party, I made no secret of its purchase. But it would be of interest to only a handful of international scholars, all I assure you completely about suspicion. Now, Trout, what you are looking for is a common thief who was surprised. A man who pierces the skull of another man with a golden snake. That's not a common thief, sir. With respect. With respect. Just what then are you suggesting? That it was a calculated act. By a man who knows the true value of the papyrus. Yes, sir. No force in all the world can stop us now. For in a mountain range where pharaohs once reside, a palace I have built beneath the stone, and there we'll wait until the great appointed tide reveals a secret door through which we'll find new life. Safe in your sealed abode, we drive to Southampton, then channel, then the open sea. Come, Valnavia, we sail. Victoria, what happy times of years ago I think of now. It won't be long, my love, 
before we've reached our goal and moving, breathing, you in my arms again and I in yours. In Egypt I shall find the key, the key to the elixir of life. June 1st at sea, bound for Egypt. I'm taking three drops of my elixir of life. The vials are almost empty. If I fail in Egypt, I am doomed. favorite passages from the Book of the Dead, all relating to the divine incarnation and the phenomenon of rebirth. Singularly appropriate, Ambrose. Our voyage has now begun, Balnavia. Though brief the time aboard, this ship will seem too long, I know. So eager are we to arrive in Egypt and complete the preparations I began long years ago. Here, in the mountain marked on this papyrus, beyond corridors which led once to a pharaoh's hidden tomb, awaits the key to resurrection and to life. I shall decipher it. Nothing, nothing will stop me now. I must tell Victoria, hidden safe below, away from curious eyes. We have but three short weeks until that glorious day. How would you pinpoint the most important part of the globe, Ambrose? Rocks erode and fall. The sand changes daily, hourly. Rivers flood, twist, form new courses. Topographically, the world is in a perpetual flux. But the sky... The sky remains the one constant factor. What are all these theories of yours leading up to? None of my theories alone, Abra. Ancient civilizations knew about this. Capitalized on it. To what end? The return of the life force, Abra. I say they're not my theories, they're 3,000 years old. Let me show you another fascinating aspect of this affair. Where's that model of the mountain? It's in the hole. Then it can wait, I'll tell you tomorrow. But by the back, I won't be able to sleep. I must know, tonight. I, I, I go down and get it. You haven't discussed this with anybody else, have you? Of course not. And Ambrose, I forbid you to tell anyone of this conversation. stored in here, sir. <laughs> Empty, I suppose. Mm, pity. Ah, that looks more like it. Yes. Well, thank you very much, officer. Uh, I mustn't keep you from your duties. Oh, I can manage sure, it. sir. I could quite easily just... Oh, I can manage by myself. Oh, well, as, you, as you say, sir. Thank you. Good night. Good night, sir. What the hell?
come in. By the way? Yes, Captain. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news. I have made two complete sweeps of the area and found no trace of your friend. Very well, then. That's that. I'm afraid that we must face up to the fact that... Well, time is running out, Mr. Beiterdeck. And no doubt you'll resume your normal course, Captain. God heavens, no. Naturally, I intend to use my every power to find him. We should continue to search until dawn, if necessary. But you said yourself there's no hope. It's been two hours. This delay is intolerable. Please bring your ship around, Captain. I would remind you, sir, that the navigation of this ship is my responsibility. I shall, of course, bear your suggestion in mind. Was he a good swimmer? I have no idea, Captain. I suppose he never... How can I put this? I suppose he never touched the bottle. Then how the hell did he get in there in the first place? The glider must have drunk his way in. Murder. The Gloucester Square murder. I can hardly read your writing, Mr. Tart. On arrival, I discovered the man's body surrounded by balls. Look here, Tart. Uh, on the snooker table, sir. What? Oh, balls on the snooker table. Cause of death was apparently by a small gold snake which entered the man's left ear at great speed and, having pierced the skull, reappeared through the right. In one ear and out the other, sir. Death, it would appear, was instantaneous. Oh, brilliant. Now, just why was his employer, the principal witness, allowed to leave the country? Tell me that. Well, it was a very delicate matter, sir, and I was dealing with a very difficult gentleman. Oh, well, I've got news for you, Trout. You're dealing with an even more difficult one now. Do you know what time it is? Uh, just after one, sir. I've been waiting for you since nine. Well, I was called out last night, sir. With who? Uh, what's it called? Uh, Foley. Never heard of it. It's at the mouth of Southampton water, sir. A man's body had been washed up. Fallen overboard? In a sense, yes, sir. Men fall overboard all the time. That's what the locals are for. That's what I complain about in this department. This one was inside a bottle, sir. Do what? He was inside a bottle. Glass it was. About seven feet long. Corked. To Egypt and our arrival here. My compliments to you, Volnavia. You have done wonders with the local fish. not dally. While Victoria safely sleeps, we must hasten to the caves within and learn what time has wrought since last I ventured there.
Olivia. Not a thing has been disturbed. Some minor decorating, some touching up, and it will seem like home. Lights, music, Olivia. A song of celebration. Unveil the band. for a madman, sir. Well, you've bloody well found one. Do you realize that this is Saturday afternoon? We'd have a little talk with you in private, sir, as you're the shipping agent. Well, we do appreciate you coming along at such short notice, Mr. Bombardio. Well, I didn't have very much option, did I, with a ruddy great police car rolling up outside my club? Frightful intrusion. And, as I say, on a Saturday afternoon. Well, it is a rather delicate matter, sir. Hmm? We've, um... We found the body. Well, I, I didn't know you mislaid one. Whose? Uh, Ambrose's. The man who fell off the... Ah, him. Yes, sir. Well, look, if it's about insurance, it's much too early for me to commit. I mean, uh, well, it seemed pretty obvious that he was... <laughs> we are loath... I beg your pardon? Uh, we are loath to involve anybody else at this juncture. Well, we have strong reason to believe that he was murdered. Murdered. Killed. Yeah, yeah, I got that. Sir, the old boy off, eh? Did you know the gentleman? Well, not intimately, but I knew him, of course, professionally, because he was always going on his cruises out to the Middle East. He was an archaeologist, you know, digging around in the dirt. Like you chaps. <laughs> right. Uh, this may seem a, a rather obvious question, sir, but on this particular passenger list, was there anyone you describe as at all, how shall I put it, odd? No, oh, ruddy lot of them. I... Well, no, that's a slight exaggeration. <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't say exceptionally odd. Oddish. Well, is that it? For the time being. Thank you. Of course, if you should have second thoughts, sir, about even the smallest thing, we would like to hear from you. All right, well, you can rely on me. I'll think about it. Of course, we do have a lot of eccentric people, as I've said before, on these tours. Well, it takes all sorts, yeah. sir. Incidentally, I must tell you, there was a woman... Oh, well, that was all another time. Well, whatever they ask for, we, as I say, we try to keep them happy. Mm -hmm. You know, we get chaps wanting pianos in their suites. Really? I can't imagine. I suppose it helps <laughs> the old thing along, Moonlight Sonata and all that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are grateful to you for coming along this afternoon. You know, on this last trip, the fellow wanted an organ. Well, I'll be off. I'm sorry, would you just say that again, sir? Well, I'll be off. No, 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 it's before that, sir. Oh, the organ, you mean? That's it, sir, yeah. Oh, I didn't think there was anything about it. I think he was probably an organist. I remember the girl stipulated that it'd be sh a cinema organ. Which girl? The girl who did the booking. Was her employer's name Fibes? Fibes? No, Smith. You get a hell of a lot of Smiths. Smith, thank God for that. Well, thank you again, Mr. Lombard. Oh, That's a nasty yeah. moment, Trout. This girl who did the book. Don't waste a man's time, Trout. We've all got our jobs to do. Yeah, did you see the man at all, sir? No, no, no. I didn't see the man. I just saw the girl. She was a very beautiful girl, very tall. You'd have liked her. There was something rather strange about her. I, I suppose she was probably an entertainer or something. Of course, there's the answer. Fellas on the boards. Wanted a bit of practice on the way over. Yeah, did you take anything else for him, sir? Organ music. Bound to go down well with all those Arabs. Clockwork musicians. Life-size clockwork musicians. And incidentally, that isn't all, all they took. I remember they took a lot of stuff. As a matter of fact, I got all the details over in my office. I'd like to come along and take right. it faster if I may. Yes, but you didn't see the man. No, I didn't see the man. I just saw the girl, as I told you. She did the whole lot. She did the paying did and everything. Did, pay? did you pay by check? No, by, no, no, cash. Return fare? No, single. Single? One way. Maybe he won't come back. Oh, uh, which five's all right, sir. And he always comes back.
saying, Shark, build a better mousetrap and the world will beat a path to your door. Every time we've built a better mousetrap, Sir Fives has built a better mouse. Nothing to do with me, sir. You sure it's not one of your... What do you mean, one of mine? Oh. So sorry, I must have dropped right off. Uh, uh, may we ask why you're here? I've come to see Mr. Waverley. Would you like me to go, sir? No, I'm Waverley. Oh, isn't that nice? Such a sweet man showed me in. I'm an Ambrose, you know. Ambrose? You're... A cousin of the late Harry. We were very sorry about that. It, it, it must have been a great shock. Not all that close, I'm afraid. We kept in touch occasionally. I thought he was a mysterious old bird. Can you tell us anything that might be of any help, Miss, uh... uh Ambr Ambrose. Ambrose. Uh, did anybody uh, bear him a grudge or anything? Nothing. Uh, uh, well, it's hardly likely, is it? I mean, he spent most of his time leaping round the world. It's possible, I suppose, though. Mm. Um, just before you came in, I took the liberty of uh, looking at this map. Um, that's not where they're going at all, you know. Who? By the back and that lot. Now, here. This is much more likely. <laughs> Where the devil is everybody? Mr. Bindebeck, I'm Hackett. Well, I imagine the others will be here. Uh, the instructions were for everyone to wait until I arrived at the base camp. Everyone. Hmm. Well? Uh, Stuart and Baker couldn't wait. They've gone off to explore the mountain. They've gone off to do what? Oh, they were getting a bit impatient. And Shavers? Oh, he's around. Hack it. Well, come on. Come on where? Oh, I'm sorry, darling. You stay here and rest. Come on. Damn it, Hackett. No man should go near that mountain alone. Nobody really knows what's in there. Laws of sacred birds guard well your place of rest. For those poor fools that dare intrude, the penalty is death.
Large enough to hold Victoria. What other secrets lie within? A key. An actual key. How ironic and how clever. When I find the lock it fits, I'll have the answer. Shavers! Baker! Where are you? Straight ahead, fighter back! Just what the devil do you think you're doing? Oh, uh, well, it's just a preliminary sortie, sir. On whose authority? We didn't realize we needed permission. Stuart, when you're older and more experienced, perhaps you'll learn to have some respect for authority. You might do well to keep in mind that you're a member of my team, working for me. And, uh... Is this your mountain, sir? I regard it as such, yes. Uh, are we to take that literally, sir? You may take it however you wish. But understand that I give the orders. Any explorations will be planned and led by me. 
Understood? Discoveries are to be made, it'll require individual effort and a certain amount of intellectual freedom. Hackett, there are no prima donnas here. Discoveries will be made by the team under my directions. Well, then perhaps you'll be so kind as to enlighten us. Just where is all this leading to? In good time. Darius! But not now, Diana. It's usual for all information to be pulled, sir. I've no doubt. But you... it's, it's rather urgent. And what is it, Diana? I have a little discovery of my own that I think you ought to see. Let this upset you. Upset me? A man has just been killed. You're in the desert, my dear. Not taking tea in Mayfair. Curious as it may seem, you don't have to remind me of that. I've drunk lots of tea in Mayfair without finding dead bodies at my feet. Would you just trust me? Trust? Yes, trust. Well, how far is that going to get me? Or us? I mean, how can I? You don't trust me. What's that supposed to mean? It's not supposed to mean anything. It seems perfectly clear to me. You don't trust me and you won't tell me. Your whole attitude has changed. Suddenly, human life means nothing to you anymore. Have I ever said that? No, but I just have. You're so callous now. Is that what you really think? Do you honestly care what I really think, do you? Of course I do. <laughs> it's just that I... What is... It's just that I can't explain it. What's holding you back? I mean, it's that, isn't it? Why does that big mountain have so much hold over you? I mean, just what is it that goes on in there? shall rest where none can find her. millenniums ago, you shall rest like the princess you are. 
For when the moon next comes full, the waters of the Nile and the tides within the seas will somehow meet, and life will flow within your veins and love within our hearts. Uh, we've got enough trouble around here without you dreaming up more. That kind of trouble I can take any time. Yes, well, she belongs to Bideback. Damn you. Yes, for some more than others. As it seems you gentlemen have nothing better to do this evening, perhaps you'll unload the other truck. Uh, what, what truck? Hackett's truck.
the loaf of bread beneath the bar, a book of verse, a glass of beer. That's, that's oh my kind of answer. Yeah. You know, I'm a bit uh, apprehensive about finding the others, sir. Do you think you know where we are, sir? Trout, I don't think I know. I don't think you know either, sir. Keep your place, Trout. Right. Same token, the Red Sea is over there. In that direction, Trad. Yes, sir. England. Yeah, yeah, quite so, sir. But how do we find this mountain range where Bide and Beck and Fives are headed? There are times, Trad, when I worry about you. All we have to do is to ask someone. Out here, sir. <laughs> Why not? Bound to be somebody. I need you. What's all this about? Why are we taking the truck? Get in. I sent Baker and the Arab workmen up there. Well, why are we Just taking get the in. truck? We broke through a wall. Found a gold sarcophagus. Already underground waters have begun to rise. Somewhere within this maze of tunnels, a new river will crest along which we will glide through gates which will be revealed to us, Balnavia. The gates which can be unlocked only with the silver key. Come, I must tell Victoria. of my life, I shall get them back. Who tries to stop me will die. Certainly is a remarkable find. How he knew it was there beats me. He went straight to it. Yeah, I didn't get caught in a celebration. Yes. A key. Why a key? Something's been biting him. Uh -huh. Who's this then? Darius. Stuart's back. Well, don't let him go away. I, I, I'll be out in a moment. He's not going anywhere. Please, you must come now. I suppose we're going to take him down. Why? I don't understand. Whose mind could conceive of such a bizarre way to kill? A man called Fives, sir. Dr. Anton Fives. 
They have taken you from me, my sweet Victoria, but fear not, for I shall recover you, and they will suffer for this outrage with their lives. So, with the death of Stuart, he's now killed four men. Yeah, Risha, Risha. If you care to go further back... Uh, yes, but why? What possible reason could he have? Well, Bidabic? The papyrus. But if he stole it, it means we have the same goal, the same purpose. Well, that's impossible. Impossible? Well, impossible or not, we must all get back to civilization at once. Yeah, especially the young lady. Yes, I'm afraid you're right. Take your first thing tomorrow morning. I want you to take Diane out of here. The rest and follow later. And your good self, sir? There's one thing more I must do before I leave here. If you value your life, you'll... That's precisely why I'm staying. A remarkable man. I hardly know him, but I... I've never met anyone more completely dedicated. That poor girl. What she must have gone through in the past few days. Why the hell did he bring her out? Curiously enough, Waverley, I think she was the reason he came here in the first place. Listen, Diane. I'm listening. You're my whole life. Everything. Please, darling, please, if nothing else, you must know that. I'm beginning to wonder if I do know anything about you. I can't tell you anymore. I mean, not that you'd understand. But the mountain must be the key to it all, sir. Possibly, Trout, possibly, but it's all purely academic. You know, we only got as far as an inner chamber. But it looked as though there's a warren of tunnels under that mountain. Every move I make, everything, this whole affair concerns our future together. Well, if it's anything like now, it's going to be pretty awful. It won't be. I promise you. It's just that I... What? What were you going to say? I... Say it. It's just that these next few hours are of desperate importance to me. This expedition isn't really the reason we came out here, is it? I mean, there's something else. Well, we could search the mountain and look for them, man. Search it? One needs a warrant to make a search, Trout. You should know that by now. Yes, I know, Sir Bain. We can't case. go charging into somebody else's mountain. This isn't Hyde Park, you know, Trout. Baker. I want you to sleep in the sarcophagus tent tonight. Be sure you're packed and ready to leave in the morning with Diana. Shakespeare says, uh, thus unconscious doth make strange bedfellows of us all. <laughs> Don't worry, Trout. Would you like me to go and get one, sir? No, that's all right, Trout. 
dear girl, land the machine. What's the matter? Where's Baker? Baker. Poor devil. Quiet. He's taken the sarcophagus. That storm last night. Fire's supposed to use that as cover. Used it? He probably summoned it. All the Arabs are gone. I don't blame them. I say I don't blame them. It's the obvious thing to do. I found the truck abandoned up by the mountain. And the sarcophagus? Oh, well, that's gone. Just as I expected. But what were they doing there? I mean, who drove the truck up there in the first place? Where's Baker? He had a bad night, sir.
Come along, Bartabek. I'm still staying. Oh. Now, look here, sir. I have a responsibility. I appreciate you have a moral responsibility, Waverly. But as far as I'm concerned, no action will jurisdiction. I'm staying here. But no one's ever got the better of five, sir. To our certain knowledge, he's already killed 15 men. You can't hope to win. Don't speak of hope to me, Trout. I mean to win. I have with Baker gone. You'll have to take Diana out of here. If you'll excuse me, gentlemen, I'd like a word with her before she leaves. Darling, would you come with me? I've got to put her suitcase in the truck. Come along, Trout. Strike camp. Yeah, we ought to get these tents down too, sir, and be on our way. Well, what about Baker? Should we dispose of his body? I don't know about his body. I think we should give his head a decent burial. Fusiliers. My God. That makes you proud to be British. Good here. How marvelous. Yes, it's probably some desert patrol. Britannia's cloak covers a large section of the globe, you know. Well, we must tell them about the others. I mean, that way they'll be safe. Yes, that's true enough. But um, I mustn't leave you. Oh, I'll go with you, Mr. Huggy. No, no, but you're absolutely right. Now, platoon of that lot ought to put fives in his place. Uh, don't go anywhere. Nothing to say, sir. Where's Diana? My God, Vibes must have her. But you haven't got a chance. He'll chop you down like the rest of them. I'm not like the rest of them. Now, Vibes, they put the fear of God in you, but not me. 
Now stay out of my way. Oh, what did I tell you? Really, he's being a trifle heavy-handed. He's being bloody offensive. If it wasn't for Miss Trowbridge in there, I'd have... Come on. Wait a minute. Wait. After him. Yes, sir. It's you. You cannot threaten the dead with death, my friend. Only with life. Eternal life. So that's it. The key. My key. No. I've searched for years. The Temple of Ibisus, the River of Life. It's mine, Fives. Then your beloved will die, for only the key can save her now. You lie. The key controls the gates, nothing more. The key controls the gates and much more. The life of your Diana. And you have only three minutes to use it. Now, save your Diana. <laughs> Uh-huh. 
about life once used by the pharaohs of Egypt. It lies beyond those gates, a river that gives new life. Again and again and again. Why do you think I came here? You have all the life you need. No more fives. The elixir that gave me youth for a hundred years is gone. This vial, this vial has sustained me for many years. Suspended time and age, but no more. How long? How many years? Too long to remember. Too long to throw it all away now. I too have searched, Vitamin. But not for myself. For my Victoria. I offer you the same goal. The life of your beloved. But hurry. When the bow breaks, my friend. It could be a trick. Why should I trust you of all people? Not me. The ancient artisans who built these chambers. When those gates are unlocked, the waters from Diana's pool will drain out, and she will be free. Save her. Don't be a fool. Soon it will be too late. For whom? For us all. Especially Diana. Every second brings her closer to a terrible death. Can you pay that price, Spider-Beck? The key! The devil take you, Fives. The devil take me, not for some considerable time, I trust.